Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name's Hannah and on this channel, I post a lot of anti-MLM content. My big anti-MLM playlist is always linked right here and in the description box below. If that content does sound interesting to you, I would love it if you would check out that playlist, like this video, subscribe, all those things really help to support my channel and I appreciate you so much for doing that. Today I'm bringing you another Zoom call reaction video, but this is unlike any Zoom call I have ever reacted to on my channel. This is a Beachbody Power Hour team call. It's hosted by a Beachbody coach who is the head of one of the top 10 teams in the company. In other words, she's very close to the top of the pyramid. She has lots and lots of people on her team under her, and she's one of the few people financially benefiting from the Beachbody scheme. If this is the first time that you're hearing of the term power hour in an MLM context, here's what that means. Basically a power hour is when you dedicate one hour of your day every day to working your business, as they call it. In this case, the whole team is getting together on a Zoom call, and they are following along to set instructions for certain tasks that they have to do. The leader of this call has a PowerPoint presentation and it says for the next five minutes, do this task. For the next 15 minutes, do this task. And so what it is is her basically explaining the task at hand and then giving them a chunk of time to complete that task altogether. The idea is that if the teammates, if the downline complete these tasks every day in their power hour, then they will be able to be successful in the business. We're gonna talk at length about how this idea of a power hour is a fallacy in the context of MLMs. But for now, that's what you need to know as far as what this power hour is and what the purpose of this Zoom call is. With that being said, this Zoom call is one hour long, but it's not gonna take us an hour to watch all of it because like I said, there's several points where she just gives the instructions and then gives a chunk of time for everyone to complete that task. So the pieces of the call that we are going to be watching and discussing and reacting to are those instructions, are the tasks that the people in this Beachbody team are being advised to do. The point in showing you this call is to expose what Beachbody coaches are trained to do in order to sell and recruit. When you sign up for an MLM, obviously the end goal is to make money. That's why we're all here, right? But making money in an MLM is extremely difficult because of the way that the business model is designed. And people learn very quickly that the most efficient way to make money is to focus all of your energy and attention on the recruitment aspect. Because then not only are you making money off of your own efforts and your own sales and your own clients, you're now also making money off of the clients and sales and efforts of your downline as well. The bigger your team, the more money you make. It's not rocket science. But recruiting people into an MLM is also extremely difficult. So to kind of combat that, the top leaders in these companies often host these team calls where they are training and coaching the downline on the certain tasks they need to complete and the mentality they need to have if they're going to be quote unquote successful in the business and make any money at all. So that's the context text information you need for this Zoom call. I'm gonna shut up now, let's watch it. Welcome everyone to our Wednesday mastermind slash power hour call. We're super excited. We have a special guest in the house and I know that is why we all got on today. We're super excited to hear from Haley, excited for her to walk us through her power hour live. Before I hand it over, um, I am going to start off with a couple of quick announcements, just a reminder a, we have a big event coming next week. Um, who's all going to Summit? Drop it in the chat, give us some fist bumps. Super excited to see all of you there. Um, my name is Tiffany, by the way. I'm in the Central Region Corporate Mentor. And I know Brandy is on the line with us. We're excited to have all of you in the house. Um, one more quick announcement. We do have the Help One More promotion that has been reignited through the month of July. All the FAQ or the, all the details are found in the FAQ 7668. Lift More launches this month, Strawberry Lemonade, the beginning of the month. We have so many fun things coming, but I'm really, really excited to have Haley on the call today. Number five in the network, Elite Coach. So excited to have you, Haley. We're excited to hear from you. And I have to give a quick a quick thing why I I know Brandy and I were just talking about she was on the best of the best um about two months ago has it been two months Haley I'm trying to think back has it been a couple months yeah, um prob probably more than that because time just flies <laughs> I know time is flying I don't know we're already at the end of I mean the half, first half of the year is gone so it's kind of crazy but I remember Haley was talking about some of the things that she does 
on Instagram and just how she connects with people. And I found it phenomenal. And I know Brandy found it phenomenal. And we were really excited to have her come on and speak to you live. And I won't take any more of the floor. Haley, the stage is yours, my friend. Well, thank you so much. Um, and thank you guys for hopping on to do a little bit of a work session. I don't know about you guys, but I love our hours. Like my favorite thing here because you get there and you feel like you haven't accomplished anything. And then when you leave, you feel like you're on top of the world because it's just like you crank out a bunch of work for an hour. So let's get started. I am going to um, share my screen. I kind of have a PowerPoint that I like to use for my power hour. So um, it might make it a little easier and then you don't have to stare at my face. So let me figure out how to share this screen. Okay, you all can see my screen, right? All right, perfect. Okay, so is there a way to make this like bigger? Okay, perfect. Um, so welcome to Power Hour with Haley. Where you are a year from now is a reflection of the action, actions you choose to make today. So by doing the actions that we're about to do in this hour, if you do that every single day, imagine where you're going to be a year from now okay and same with your workout i love this quote because literally every choice every decision everything that you do today it may seem so small to you but if you duplicate every single day and put an effort every single day have the mindset of are my actions today taking me to my goals where i want to be in a year Okay, so on the days that you don't feel like doing a power hour or doing your work or inviting or showing up on social media, ask yourself, okay, is that gonna put me to where I wanna be in my business a year from now? So for the first five minutes, we are going to make a poll on our stories, okay? Um, go to your stories and ask a question with a poll for your followers to vote on. It literally can be anything. It can be, do you like ketchup or barbecue sauce better? Is it harder for you to work out or eat healthier? Do you prefer iced or hot coffee? Do you prefer salty or sweet snacks? Um, do you, are you dragging today? Like literally anything, okay? So do a poll. You can either video asking the question, like go on your stories live and be like, okay, I just made a sandwich. And it's so funny because I just thought of this. My husband, if I were making this for him, I would have put ketchup on it. But I like barbecue on my chicken. And it got me to thinking, I wonder if my followers are more on my side or my husband's side. Would you put barbecue or ketchup on the sandwich? Like literally anything, okay? So you can do it that way or take a picture of something and add the poll on there. Um, because then tomorrow you're going to come back to your pro profile and you're going to go back to this poll and if you're not sure how to do that you're going to click the three bars on the top right um you're going to go to archive and then go back to the story with the poll on it you're going to swipe up and then click the blue bars to see the votes and who voted on what then you're going to go message those people sparking conversation on what they voted on you're going to be like girl Thank you, Team Haley. By the way, have you ever seen this barbecue from Thrive Market? It's my new favorite thing ever. It's lower sugar, it's natural ingredients. If you ever get a chance, try it. Or do you, have you ever like, you know, just spark conversation, okay? Be human. Don't sit there and overthink it of like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to say now. Like, what would you say if your friend was having lunch with you and she chose ketchup and you're like, dude, why are you putting ketchup on your chicken? Put barbecue sauce, you know, like spark conversation. Okay, so five minutes, ready, set, go. Okay, so the team has been tasked with spending the next five minutes posting a poll on their Instagram stories about something completely random and unrelated to the business. I'm compelled to point out first and foremost how fake this feels. She's saying, be human and have a normal and natural conversation. But then she's advising that her team create a random poll or create a random reason for creating a random poll for the sole purpose of baiting people into clicking on that poll and engaging with it so therefore the door, the line of communication is now open for you to reach out to them the next day and start up a conversation about this poll. I'm sorry, but that's not a normal human interaction. <laughs> Coming up with this fake story about how you're making sandwiches for you and your husband and you just happen to be thinking about what people's favorite condiments are when you're really not and you couldn't care less, that is not normal. That's calculating, that's manipulative, that's an ulterior motive that you have 
have to try and slide into their DMs so that now you have them on the hook for a pitch in the future. Because that's the end goal, right? You don't care if they like barbecue or ketchup more. Sure, you might spark up a conversation about that today, but that's a superficial fake conversation that you are engaging in to somehow build up rapport and build up this relationship to prep and prime them to be pitched in the future. This kind of tactic is very sneaky because you're not just outwardly pitching it to them. Like I said, you're baiting them into a conversation with you about something completely unrelated to your MLM because you have this ulterior motive in mind. In some ways, reaching out to strangers on social media and cold messaging them and straight up pitching them your MLM business opportunity, that has become a thing of the past. People are catching on to the MLM boss babe tactics these days, and people are really turned off by these cold messages, and it's very easy to block it, delete it, ignore it. So now MLM reps have to get a little bit more creative and come up with sneakier ways to engage you in conversation instead. In my opinion, it's pretty safe to assume that if an MLM rep is messaging you about anything, it could be something completely unrelated to their business opportunity, you can assume that they do have an ulterior motive behind that interaction, and it's best to not engage if you don't want to be harassed and pitched in the future. So now I'm going to skip forward five minutes in the video because they're not talking. Everyone's just working independently. And we're going to pick back up when she gives the next set of directions. I was just looking at the chat. Sorry, looked late. Um, so you could do anything. Um, like if you do polls and people don't answer, you could do a question box. Like and ask me anything. Okay. And then let's say no one <laughs> actually told this trick to my team and they were like sitting there that like, you you what and i was like yes I, I used to do that um i would do the question box and no one would freaking ask me questions and so i'm like well that was a fail and so what i started to do is you can actually go ask yourself a question on the question box and when you go to like respond to it people can't see who asked it. So they think like other followers are asking you questions and they're nosy, like people just wanna read your answer to your questions. And so I would go ask myself questions. And it's almost like when people saw that like other people were asking me questions, you know, they thought it was other people, but it was asking my, me, my, or it was actually me asking myself questions, but they thought other people were asking me questions. So then they thought, oh yeah, I, I should ask her this. Oh yeah, I've always wondered this. And it almost like, created the energy for people to ask me questions, if that makes sense. So you could literally go ask yourself like random fun questions and then do some like, oh my gosh, I'm really wanting to, you know, sample one of your workouts. Do they ever do samples? Or do you ever, do you have a sample of Shakeology? And then just be like, oh my gosh, yes, I would love for you to try the sampler of Shakeology. You know what I mean? So like find ways and questions that you want people to ask you and go else, go ask yourself that. And then it, I think like the energy will build up and then like, you know, you'll, you'll start to spark conversation that way. Um, so maybe give that a try. Okay. Now don't forget tomorrow to go back to that. Okay. <laughs> Go back to that bowl. Girl, I knew MLM Huns did this. I knew it. I've just never seen somebody admit it before. Right now she is admitting to the fact that people do not take interest in her ask me anything question boxes that she'll put on her Instagram story. So to combat that, she is submitting her own questions to herself because people won't know the difference. <laughs> that is something else, okay? I knew it in my gut that this is what they did. I have said that in other videos. I have speculated. I knew this was a tactic that they used to stir up fake interest. And honestly, it's kind of smart. It's disingenuous, kind of smart. If you want to create a sense of FOMO and make it appear like people are interested in your business opportunity when they're really not, that's pretty savvy to submit your own questions and tailor them to the exact responses you want to post and you want to put out there so that you can still make your pitch at the end of the day, even if nobody actually cares. <laughs> this is another example of behavior that is not normal. People who are not in MLMs do not behave this this way. Who on earth would want to waste their time answering questions that they have asked themselves? Either you have to be pretty self-absorbed or you have to have an agenda. And to me, this is even more proof that the things that MLM reps post on social media are a facade. It's not real. It's not genuine. It's fabricated to fit whatever kind of fantasy land they're living in. Because at the end of the day, you can't be successful in your MLM. You're not going to make any money if you don't have people expressing interest and in joining your team. So what do you do when people really aren't interested in joining your team? You fake it. You fake it till you make it. Now we are going to send a free sample workout or 
um, like meal plan or meal idea. Okay. So we're going to actually do 15 minutes of this because this is like my favorite, one of my favorite things to do. Um, so for example, you could do this to your followers or you can do it to people who don't follow you. Your friends is friends is friends. Um, like your friends who she's following, uh, you could do literally anyone. Okay. This, this works for anyone. And that's what I love, love about it. But this is like an example of the message I said, this was obviously a few months ago, but you could totally switch this up and be like, Hey, Jessica, I hope you had a wonderful holiday weekend and celebrated the 4th of July with friends and family. I hope 2022 has been a year of health, growth, and happiness for you and your family so far. Four and a half years ago, I was sent a free sample workout from a lady who I now get to call my leader just out of her generosity to allow me to try an at-home workout. Well, long story short, I tried it and loved it. Four and a half years later, and I've fallen in love with the with working out from home and I've transformed my health feeling the best I felt in a long time I think back to what if she wouldn't have sent me that so now I'm doing the same and sending a sample of the workout program I'm doing and thoughts of maybe you could fall in love and need this like I did but if not truly there are no feelings hurt if you do have any interest I'd love to get you into my accountability group to do this with me and some other women and then so I send that message and then I go and I would do the lift more sample workout right now or the fire and flow. Um, and then you're just going to send them the sample workout and you're going to write down their handle. And then in four days, go check up. Um, maybe you were ghosted. Maybe they like, you know, didn't respond or anything. Um, and then just be like, uh, hey, Jessica, I'm really sorry. This week got super crazy busy on me. I had it wrote down to come and touch base with you. Um, and I feel bad that it's taken me so long. I was just wondering if you got a chance to try the sample workout or if you're currently loving your fitness routine, um, cheering for you, you know, anything like that. So, um, you know, do that follow up uh, in four days and see, you know, how they're liking it. And then funny story, if you dive into this program and you freaking get a bomb transformation from lift more and you share that, these are the people that are going to be like, dang, she sent me that sample workout. And that is a bomb transformation. I'm going to go press play to that and see what I think. So it may not work for them right now. And they may not join you in this first round of the program, but if you go hard on that program that you sent the sample workout link for, you get a transformation and you post that, they're going to want the program. And they're going to be like, yes, she messaged me. I'm going to message her. You know what I mean? Because they might be skeptical, but once you prove that it works, they're going to be like, all right, do the sample workout, sign me up. I need that. Okay. So, um, and you can do this with nutrition too. If you don't want to do a sample workout, you can do it and, you know, ask about just reword the wording a little bit and do something like sending them a fixate recipe or um, an example meal plan of 21 day fixed portion controller to be mindset. Um, ask them if they struggle with making meals for their family like you did and how fixate helps you do that. Um, you know, anything like that. So ready, set, go. Again, fake, fake, fake more disingenuous messages that you are sending out to strangers in the hopes of making money off of them in the future a lot of times this kind of behavior will be justified in their minds by saying like i'm just sharing something i love or i'm giving the gift of a workout or i am helping people on their health and fitness journey but that's not really what's going on you're not just giving a friend a recommendation out of the goodness of your heart you are giving a recommendation to somebody who you may or may not even know in the hopes that you're going to be able to make money off of them one day. And notice how she gives this example of trying to be relatable, like sending a message that says, hey, are you struggling to feed your family like I was? I have the meal plan solution for you. That is an explicit admittal of preying on somebody's vulnerabilities. And unfortunately, there's a lot of room for that kind of behavior in Beachbody specifically, because in general, health and wellness is a pain point for almost everyone. I would argue that most people out there have some kind of health related vulnerability, whether that's their weight, their eating habits, their relationship with exercise, they have a diagnosed health condition, etc. whatever it is. These are issues that hit very close to home for people and that may make them more susceptible to being manipulated by a Beachbody coach who is pitching them. And the last thing I'm noticing here is this template and this wording that she is suggesting you can use or follow to message people. And this is giving the impression to me that it's pretty customary to come up with a script that you can then copy and paste on a mass scale, which is something 
something that also feels incredibly disingenuous. It doesn't matter how thoughtful or personalized these messages appear to be at surface level, it loses all of its value once you realize that you're probably one of hundreds if not thousands of other people out there who have gotten the exact same message. It's that sickening realization that like, wait a minute, this person doesn't actually care about me, they just wanna make some money off of me. Cause let's be honest, a stranger coming into your DMs and saying things like, hope you had a great holiday with your family, wishing you growth and happiness. Out of my generosity, I really just wanna give something to you as a gift. I'm cheering for you. Like no, people don't do that unless you have something to sell. Again, not normal behavior if you're not in an MLM. If I get a message like this in my Instagram DMs, my guard is already up. Kind of create FOMO too. So like tomorrow after I do my workout, I will go on my stories and be like, oh my gosh, I just can't get enough of this sample work at workout and I'm so stoked. And I'm so excited to see that so many of you are sending me feedback after doing it, you know, and I'm so excited, like basically talk about and create that FOMO of like, I'm so excited I'm getting good feedback from those of you who've tried the sample workout. So then, you know, those people who are ghosting you are like, oh, like other women are like getting this message and trying it and giving her feedback. Does that make sense? So like create that FOMO of, um, you know, that you're getting good feedback and so many women are hyped about it and all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, so, or same with the nutrition, make that recipe for dinner that you sent out and then go on your stories and be like, you guys, I'm so glad that you guys in my DM are liking this one too. Um, I sent out this chicken marsala um, recipe to some of you to try for your family who said that you wanted some healthier meals and all of you are sending me pictures and I'm so glad your family's loving it too. You know, create that FOMO of like, oh my gosh, like she's sending these to other women and they're trying it and all that kind of, all that kind of stuff. Again, with the creating FOMO around something that does not exist. Continuing on with the fake it till you make it advice. Even if not one single person asked you for a sample workout and not a soul responded to you saying they loved it, you're still advised to go on your social media and to make a spectacle about how that's the case, even though it's not. In more blunt terms, her advice here, just lie. No one's gonna know the difference. Just lie through your teeth, okay? Again, who would be wasting their time going on their Instagram stories and making this whole deal about how your DMs are flooded with people who are just loving the workouts. MLM huns with an agenda, that's who. Now we are going to go to our challenge group that we're in, whether you run a challenge group, which I hope you do, or bod group or anything like that, and you're going to take five minutes and we're going to go in there and you can either go live quick, um, go hype people up, give love, post something beneficial, maybe a recipe that you're having for dinner, send them your um, meal plan. You can private message all of your challengers asking them like, hey, doing a check-in right now, how are things going? What program are you committed to? Are you lacking motivation? How can I help? Um, have you tried the new strawberry lemonade? Uh, anything like that, okay? So um, check in with challengers, all that kind of stuff. So we will do that for five minutes. My understanding is that challenge groups are essentially a group of your customers. These are the people that you have pitched to and they have agreed to participate in whatever kind of workout program is going on at that time. Beachbody has their own online platform where you can add group members and message them and post things. So what she's asking people to do right here for the next five minutes is to go onto that online platform and check in with their customers. This does seem relatively harmless. I don't personally have an issue with having an accountability group and checking in on people. How are you doing? How is it going? But the part I do take a little bit of an issue with is the fact that in those challenge groups, the Beachbody coach is seen as the authority figure and the one who is there to guide you and answer questions and offer advice. And this is the part in the video where I remind everybody that becoming a Beachbody coach requires exactly zero qualifications. You have to be 18 years old and you have to be able to afford a starter kit and that is it. So the problem is you have these young, inexperienced, unqualified people calling themselves 
themselves coaches and offering up fitness and nutrition advice to people. And oftentimes these coaches don't even know you personally. You are a stranger they found on the internet. They may have poached you from social media and they know absolutely nothing about you or your personal health history. And that leaves the door wide open for these coaches to be making inappropriate and potentially dangerous recommendations to you. Think of Beachbody as a machine, okay? The more people they get sucked in, the more money gets spit out. The coach doesn't have to be qualified. They don't have to know you. They don't have to care about you. And they don't have to give you proper recommendations in order for them to make money off of you. As long as you agree to sign up and you fork over your credit card information, your job is done in their eyes. And I say all of this as it pertains to this whole check on your challenge group task, because even that feels superficial and fake. They don't have any qualified recommendations or pieces of advice to actually be offering you in the challenge group. So I can imagine that these challenge groups are just filled with woo woo, you go girl, toxic positivity garbage. If you join a Beachbody challenge group, that person, that coach is not your trainer, is not your nutritionist. They're not qualified in any way, unless they have their own certifications and degrees outside of the Beachbody program. And the sole purpose of this task is to get on there, check on everybody, love bomb them, give them lots of compliments, boost them up and try and keep them as a customer because that's what matters most here. All right, okay. Now, this is my favorite thing to do. Um, we are gonna go find new people, okay? So this is, I do this every single day. Um, and what you are going to do is you are going to go to Instagram and you are gonna click on the search icon, the little search thing on the bottom. And then you're gonna go to this top search bar and you are going to search a location okay so this is my example that i use every time um when i was going to nashville for my very first time for my 25th birthday like three months leading up to it i would go type in um nashville in the search bar okay so think of a location that like you're going to or you've been or a bucket list location okay go type that in literally anything new orleans um destin florida um think of a location you're then going to click enter so it searches and then you're gonna see these um tabs at the top and it says top accounts audio tags places go to the way right and click places and then nashville tennessee pops up so i'm gonna click that or downtown nashville also pops up i could click that one and then all these things pop up and you're gonna click the recent tab, okay? Cause right now it's on top. You're gonna click the recent tab. This is all recent posts, okay? So like anyone who is tagging the location of Nashville, Tennessee and putting the location recently, their pictures are popping up, okay? So then I go through and I look at these pictures and I find ones that are like women that I would like to connect with. OK, so here's a perfect example. Um, she, this girl has a picture with her best friend. They're downtown Nashville and they look absolutely adorable. They're probably like in the 21 range around there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that picture. I'm going to like the picture. I'm going to comment on the picture. This girl has like the cutest little orange dress. And I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, that dress is adorable. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to private message her. Okay. So I'm going to click on her page and I'm going to message her. And I'm going to be like, hey, it looks like her name is Merit. Hey, Merit. I see, um, or like, so I'd be like, hey, Merit. I, uh, your picture popped up on my For You page and I think it's because I've been searching um, Nashville, Tennessee because I'm going there for the very first time in August for my birthday. And your picture popped up and first of all, I need the link to that orange dress because that is adorable. And secondly, I was wondering if you have any recommendations since I see you're in Nashville on places to eat. I'm definitely a foodie and I would love any recommendations. Thanks for your time. I hope you're having a blast. You are adorable. Okay. Or you could say maybe you went to Nashville. Okay. So then three months after I went to Nashville, I would go and I would send a message and I would be like, Hey, Mary, I see you're in Nashville. I actually just got back from Nashville. And I have to tell you, the listening room was our top thing that we love to do. If you please have a chance, go there. Um, 
this is what we loved. Uh, if you do go, let me know what you think. Your picture popped up because obviously I was in Nashville and you know, you have the location there. You look adorable, have the time of your life. Um, you know, you can give recommendations or ask for recommendations and like literally. So I would say that, and then I go back and I find another one. The next picture is this girl and her boyfriend. They are adorable. I would say the same thing. Okay. I'd be like, Hey, oh, just kidding. That's Nathan. That is a guy. I'm not gonna, but actually just kidding. He tagged his girlfriend. So I'm going to go to her profile and it looks like, okay, yep. She's adorable. Hello. You look you know, amazing in Nashville. I see you were there for the fireworks show. Um, I'll definitely put that on the list next time that we're thinking about going to Nashville. I never thought about them having an amazing fireworks show. Um, I do have to tell you, if you're there for a few more days, go to Milk and Honey. You have to get the banana peanut butter waffle. It is the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. Sorry, don't mean to be a creep, but your picture just popped up on my For You page because we just got back from Nashville not too long ago and I couldn't help but, you know, comment or recommendation. Hope you have the time of your life. That's all you have to say. Okay. You don't need to follow up with these people, nothing, but hopefully they come and they're like, who is this chick? And they creep you. And if you have a good social media page, if you have a transformation in the last 10 posts, that's going to catch their eye. If you have fun things on your stories, if you, you know, have a great social media page, they're going to be like, Oh, wow. Like, I wouldn't mind following this chick and hopefully you get gain a follower out of it. Okay. Um, so I do that for about 10 to 15 minutes every single day. Okay. And you go like you guys, sometimes probably 80% of the time, I don't get a response, but I'm just praying and hoping that maybe they come and creep me or, you know, I get views on my page or anything like that. And also, I'm not kidding. It was like so helpful leading up to Nashville. I have a list still on my phone of recommendations that people gave me to go there from doing this. So it was actually super helpful for my trip. Um, so just be human, go connect with people in any way that you want. Again, with the fake calculated interactions. Her advice on how to find new people is to go on Instagram, search a location, find young women who look like they might be interested in Beachbody and then start a conversation with them. And did anybody catch how she's literally lying to these people? OMG, I just came across your profile on accident because we both tagged Nashville. Just wanted to stop by and say, I love your dress. How mean girls does this sound? No, you did not come across her on accident. You opened up the Instagram app and typed in something very very specific with the intention of seeking out new people. It wasn't a happy accident. It wasn't out of the kindness of your heart. It wasn't because you're actually looking for recommendations. It's because you're hoping that they will come to your page and they will follow you and you'll gain a follower out of it. And if you're really lucky, maybe you can make some money on them. I feel like at this point in the Zoom call, it is very clear what the strategy is here. Lie, be manipulative, be deceitful, be fake. That is what they are doing, whether they are ready to acknowledge and admit that or not. And then here's what really grinds my gears, okay? Did you notice how she's looking through people who have tagged Nashville and she finds a couple, a man and a woman, and she's like, oh, she's so cute, I'm gonna message her. Oh wait, it's a guy's profile, Never mind. Good thing he tagged his girlfriend, I'm gonna go to her profile and message her instead. I don't want the guy. It is complete delusion that MLM Huns claim that they don't prey on women and then they say and do shit like that. Why don't you want men on your team? Don't men like to exercise too? Why are you targeting his girlfriend instead of him? Why do you have a personal bias for recruiting women and not men? Why are you actively seeking out only women? This is a very complex and convoluted topic that deserves its own video actually as to why women are preyed upon and sucked into MLMs at a much higher rate than men are. But in my opinion, at a very surface level, general blanket statement, I feel like women are targeted for MLMs in this way on social media, because typically women tend to have stronger social media presences, and therefore they may be more likely to actually follow through with these power hour type tasks 
like posting and creating polls and messaging strangers. So therefore, in the upline's eyes, they probably see women as the ones that will work the business harder than men would, therefore making them more money. Now, I realize that statement is a generalization that's not true for all women and for all men, but I'm just saying, if you were to come across my profile versus my husband's profile, it's pretty clear who is more active on social media, right? Given those two options, who are you going to invest your time in to try and recruit? The girl who posts on her Instagram stories multiple times a day or her husband who hasn't posted anything in nine months? <laughs> I personally think that's a very compelling primary reason that maybe women are targeted more than men, but then it comes to the product of Beachbody specifically that might give us another clue as to why they're targeting women because the product being sold through Beachbody is diet and exercise programs. I think the argument could be made that this kind of product is catered more towards women as most fad diet and exercise programs are. According to the Direct Selling Association, 76% of people involved with MLMs in 2021 were women. So the statistics support the fact that women are more likely to get involved with MLMs than men are for one reason or another. Like I said, it's an entire topic that deserves its own video. I'm not gonna get too deep into it right now, but we are seeing proof right here with that statement that she made that men are not the primary target. And top leaders in these companies are displaying behaviors of ignoring men intentionally and going after women instead. You will never be able to convince me that MLM reps do not intentionally prey on women, especially when we are seeing such explicit evidence of exactly that. Okay, since we are running a little low on time, I'm gonna move on. Um, but you can always go back if you have time today and continue if you felt like you were on the groove of that. Okay, now for 10 minutes, we're gonna go give love, okay? And this is something I think that is so under, I don't know what the word is, like people don't realize the importance of it enough. You guys, if you want to receive love on your page, meaning if you want people to vote on your polls, if you want people to comment and like on your pictures, if you want people to, you know, when you get on and talk on your stories, I love when people converse with me and type like, oh my gosh, yes, like I totally agree. Or, oh my gosh, your eyeshadow is so pretty today. Or, oh my gosh, where did you get that lipstick? Like, I love when people converse and give love to me. And I've realized that when I increase giving love, I get more love. You know, the people that you become besties with and you're like, if you are someone's biggest supporter and if you are constantly liking someone's posts and, you know, watching their stories and voting on their polls and things like that, they're going to do that in return to you because they appreciate you doing that to them. Um, so literally just take like five to 10 minutes right now and go watch people's stories, comment back, tell them if you like their eyeshadow, ask them how they did their hair, where did they get their necklace? Um, you know, listen to what they're saying and give feedback, um, go comment. And rather than just like, sometimes I think I scroll and I get in the habit of scrolling and like, I see a picture of this lady and I'm like, oh my gosh, her dress is cute but I don't like her photo. I don't tell her that her dress is cute. I just think it. And it's like, why couldn't I quickly like that and type that comment, you know, rather than just thinking, oh, her dress is cute. No, like tell her, give her love. So um, I just get in, like, I don't know about you guys, but and I, I get in the habit of not giving enough love and taking the time to be the follower that I want my followers to be to me. So um, take five to 10 minutes and go give some love. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with taking some time out of your day to show love and support to others in the form of leaving them a nice comment or sending them a nice message or whatever it is. But again, it comes back to the motivation and the intention behind that action. In this case, that is a self-serving action. You would not be taking that action if you weren't hoping to get something in return for yourself, whether that's followers, likes, comments, a potential customer, a potential downline member. And it's the way that these seemingly well-intentioned actions are actually so selfish that really bugs me the most. I have a whole series on my channel. It's called MLM Horror Stories. And these are the experiences that people have had with reps, with companies. Maybe they joined, maybe they were pitched, maybe they have a family member in an MLM. They will write out that experience, they'll send it to me and I'll read it for a video. And you would not believe the number of emails I receive that all follow the central theme of, I thought I was making a friend, 
I let this person into my life. I spent time on this relationship and eventually the pitch came out and I had to learn the hard way that they had an ulterior motive with me all along. Do you recognize how damaging that is to people? A lot of people who report that kind of experience, maybe they're college kids looking for new friends. Maybe they're a new mom looking for other new moms as a support group. Maybe they're just going through a tough time in general in their life. And so when somebody reaches out to them, showing them love and kindness, they're far more likely to receive it and engage with it. And the common experience that's reported out of all of those stories is that people feel hurt. They feel used. It's damaging when you think you're gaining a new friend, you think they care about you, you think they're interested in you, and then eventually you realize it was all fake. That is not an acceptable way to treat people. You are essentially using people and stepping on people to boost yourself up to where you want to be. And I don't know about you, but if these are the kind of job duties that I'm gonna have to engage in to earn my paycheck, I don't want any part of it. No thank you, it is so toxic that people feel these days that they have to sift through all the MLM huns and their ulterior motives to get to the people who are genuine and have honest intentions. As sad as it sounds, if an MLM rep is communicating with you in any capacity about any topic, it's pretty safe to assume that they do have an ulterior motive and you are a dollar sign to them. How could you not assume that with everything they've laid out in this Zoom call already? The point you should be taking away from this is that the motive behind everything Everything they do is money, even if it doesn't appear that way at first. Okay, and lastly, um, make tomorrow's post. I love you guys to, like when I'm doing a power hour, I feel like I'm mentally there. I have my workspace good and I'm just like, I'm mentally focused to make and write out tomorrow's post, okay? So then all I have to do is sometime today or tomorrow morning, take the picture to go with the caption. Um, so think about tomorrow's post. What do you want to write about? What's on your mind? Are you feeling like, you know, maybe you need to pick up a personal development book right now for five minutes, get your mindset in that inspirational mindset, type your thoughts and takeaways from it, and then um, write it out in a post in the notes in your phone. And then I just copy and paste that and apply a picture to it and post it tomorrow. So um, for an example, since you're doing a power hour, you might have the thoughts and the feels of gratefulness for awesome. coaching. How has coaching changed your life? Yeah. What are you, you know, are you excited for summit? Um, are you loving the community? Anything like that. Um, how long has it been since you've told your story? How long, you know, did you, have you shared, you know, why you coach? What made you decide to coach? What made you want to start to take care of your life? What made you want to say yes? Talk about your fears and hesitations before you coached and or before you started. Where are you now? Um, I think so often we forget to share our story. And the more we share our story, it's going to catch someone new every single time. So type out your story, type out your why, type out where your headspace is. Um, but I just think that since we're in this time or this like mindset right now of being focused and our thoughts are there and you're in a good mindset, uh, just go ahead and start typing your caption for your post tomorrow. As she's sitting here rattling off all the options for the different kinds of posts you can make, I'm thinking to myself, yep, seen that, seen that, seen that. From people in all MLMs, not just Beachbody. And that's another important thing to consider is that this is a Beachbody call, but in this case, they're simply just being used as an example of the behaviors and intentions of people in all MLMs. These tips and tasks are not unique to Beachbody. Show me an MLM rep from literally any other company and I bet you that they have posts that fall under those guidelines that she just described. It's kind of wild to me to watch them try so hard to make messages or posts that seem so personalized and unique to them at first glance, but we know under the surface that they're looking at it like a formula. Everything is centered around who can post and message the most. Why? Because success in an MLM is a numbers game. The people with the biggest teams make it to the higher ranks and make the most money. So the goal is to recruit as many people as possible as quickly as possible before your teammates get there first. In a weird way, these people are all on a team together, but they're also in direct competition with one another. It's a rat race 
race to see who can recruit the most people first because the resources are so limited. There is a finite number of young women who utilize social media out there and the job duties of being in an MLM require you to be the person to capture the most of that finite resource. So therefore, to be ahead in the rat race, you need to have these formulas, these copy and paste messages, these certain topics that you always make posts about. There needs to be a system in place so that you can kind of mindlessly go through it. Yet another example of being extremely calculated and fake. All right, Um. hopefully, I know we're kind of at that one hour mark, so I want to uh, wrap it up for you guys. We couldn't have timed that any better. <laughs> Little man just woke up from his nap, literally an exact hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so I hope that you guys had a productive hour, um, got some new ideas, and I just thank you for hopping on and being here with me, and I hope that you guys have a wonderful, yep, we hope you have a wonderful Wednesday, and we'll catch you later. I just want to say really quick, thank you so much, Haley. This was incredible. We appreciate you just walking through what you're doing. And obviously there's something that's working considering the fact that you are number five in the network. Super excited to see you soon and meet you in person as well. And, and I really truly hope that everybody left with some concrete action items that you're able to take with you and implement in your power hours each and every day because it's all about consistency guys and i heard her say one thing and it really stuck with me is be the type of follower that you want others to be to you that's super powerful and i think that i'll take that with me but there's so much so many nuggets in this i am so excited to hear from you again thank you we appreciate your time and i will be sending out the recording as soon as it is finished downloading thank you all so much for joining have a great rest of your week and we'll see you all soon at summit Here's the last point that I want to drive home. What things do you need to do to make money in an MLM? The answer is to receive a paycheck, you need to sell the product or you need to recruit people. Now, what did the tasks of this power hour consist of? This power hour consisted only of things that you can do that may or may not increase your chances of selling the product or recruiting somebody. Recognize that they just worked their business for an entire hour and made exactly $0 doing it. In other words, they just donated their time completing tasks that may or may not actually pay off for them financially. They messaged people, they liked people's posts, they wrote out captions, they put silly polls on their Instagram story. For what? for the chance that somebody out there might interact with them and perhaps become a customer or teammate in the future. Sure, doing these tasks probably increases somebody's probability of getting teammates and getting customers as compared to people who don't do these tasks. But at the end of the day, remember that earning money in an MLM is never guaranteed. A huge part of a person's success in this type of business model has to do with luck and it has to do with the right people engaging with them at the right times. But here's a few issues. Every single day that passes, more and more people are joining MLMs, meaning that the recruitment pool is actively shrinking. Additionally, each and every day, people are seeing the light about the scam they're in and they are quitting. Going a step further, each and every day, people are coming across anti-MLM content. They are educating themselves on why they should not get involved with this kind of scam because they're seeing the predatory and unsustainable nature of this industry. And I say all of this because it is of my opinion that as time goes on, day by day, it's only going to become more and more difficult to be successful in these schemes. My closing thought that I want you to take with you is that you can join an MLM and you can do this exact same power hour every single day for the end of time and still not see any results. Because at the end of the day, you are at the mercy of whoever is willing to give in to your pitch. If nobody bites on this bait that you're putting out there for an hour every single day, you cannot be successful in the scheme. You will not make any money. And it's important to know that that's also not your fault. It is a fault of the business model and how its recruitment based design is set up for most people to fail. So if you are coming across this video because you're wondering if you want to join Beachbody, you're wondering if you want to join a different company, maybe you're in Beachbody currently and you're recognizing for yourself that these power hours just don't work for you the way you think they would, I want this to be your sign and your reminder that it's not your fault. You are a hard worker and you've 
done everything you can and you are deserving of everything your company claims it's going to give you. But it is statistically impossible for the company to provide you with those things. The way it's set up and designed is for a very tiny percentage of people at the tippy tippy top to benefit at the expense of you failing. You deserve so much more than that. You are worth so much more than that. And I hope that this video is food for thought moving forward. That's all I have for you for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next one real soon.